in. Hello, everyone. Hi, Dave. How are you? Good. Doing good. Good. How are you? Doing well. Very well. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Where are you? If you have been, uh, what's that big growing? That is the Pantheon <laughs> in Rome. Ooh. <laughs> wow. That's uh, my wife's favorite spot. Mm. Mm, nice. there's like the the uh open area in front of it what do they call it like all i can think of is patio but that's not the right word and then oh piazza yes and then yes. and then there's some places to eat or because like karen and i oh, were there and we yeah ate. places to eat and if you go let's see if you have your put your back to the pantheon and then if you go uh Let's see, on the diagonal to the right, you go up a little tiny side street and there's a nice restaurant there called Trattoria Pantheon. And uh, delicious, delicious food there. We walked in one time and it was crowded. So he had this big hunk of Parma ham and the owner came out and as you were waiting in line, he's slicing off pieces of Parma <laughs> ham for you to <laughs> eat. <laughs> And then right before you get to that part, there was a gelato store. Mm -hmm. Great place. Very nice, very nice. Oh, I'm glad you got to do that trip. That's fabulous. Yep. All right. So we are gathered here today for, <laughs> for <laughs> Malimi's proposal. Yay. <laughs> and, um, I, I think I have the format down right. So Malimi will get about a half hour to present or however, what we said, 20 minutes to a half hour. And then we'll have a question and answer period. Then we'll ask him to leave or we'll join a breakout room, whichever, um, and do our final deliberations. And then we'll come back and share that with him. Sound good? Sounds good, um, yes. Yes. Okay, so wait, let's see. Let me make sure that Malimi's able to share screen. Okay, you can take it away whenever you're ready. Okay, let me uh, start sharing my screen first. All right, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, let me minimize this here. Um, I'm trying to... Uh, control this uh, picture panel so that it's not covering my screens, my, my slides. Anyway, I don't know. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for uh, the opportunity, uh, giving me the opportunity to present my proposal and so the topic of my dissertation is the relationships between students' ICT usage, self-efficacy, and literacy. Starting with introduction, chapter one, uh, background of the study about ICT. Information and communication technology ICT is important um, to all people in the world today because they, use, they need it to accomplish many activities in their everyday lives. In, um, ICT refers to technologies used to access, gather and store, also analyze and report information. That is according to the National um, Assessment Board. 
ICT background. Because of the importance of ICT, the International Association for the Evaluation of Education Achievement introduced the International Computer and Information Literacy Study for grade eight students in 2013. Um, a little bit about the information communication uh, the International Communication and Information Literacy Study is designed to examine how students globally develop the set of knowledge, understanding, attitude, and disposition, um, and the skills that comprises the process of uh, using computers. to communicate in different ways. Computer and information literacy can be defined as individuals' ability to use computers to investigate, create, and communicate in order to participate effectively in, uh, at home, at school, and in the community. The um, first, uh, the first cycle of this study was done in 2013, but the second was done in 2018. Now, the assessment for this, um, uh, uh, the framework for this assessment has um, for, uh, four strands and eight aspects. The strands are uh, of overarching concepts or categories, whereas aspect uh, specific content category um, uh, literacy within the strands. So these are the strands of the uh, computer and information literacy. There's, uh, one of the strand, strand is understanding computer use. The second is gathering information. The third is producing information and the last one is digital communication. Under each of these strands, you have two aspects, making it a total of eight aspects. So the framework for this assignment, uh, for this assessment is aligned with several national and international uh, standards such as the Standard for Technological and Engineering Literacy, uh, International Society for Technology Education Standards for Students, also uh, the Framework for 21st Century Learning, Next Generation Science Standards, and Common Core st st State Standards for Mathematics. So, um, let us now see a little bit background of ICT in education. Use of ICT is increasingly becoming standard practice in education and is therefore an important part of preparing young people for participation in modern society. Access and use of ICT is important for all students to help them acquire ICT literacy self-efficacy within which they need for successful learning in the 21st century. However, students' access to and the use of education, uh, education technology can vary from school to school and home to home, as well as uh, from gender to gender and less as well. Also, socioeconomic status of students can also impact their access to education technology. Students from high income families have access to a lot of education technology resources at home and most of the time at school. And those from low income families has limited uh, access to 
technology resources which help them to learn. Studies also show that female and minority students have limited access to and the use of education technology. These are the students who are underrepresented in uh, science, technology, and engineering, mathemat and the mat mathematics field. Now let us see the importance of self-efficacy. Self-efficacy refers to personal's belief about the ability to use cognitive, social, and behavioral knowledge and the skills to perform successfully assigned tasks or activities. That is according to Bandula. In education settings, self-efficacy is simply students' belief on their capability to succeed in learning activities. Self-efficacy is more instrumental in people's everyday life, including learning that than any other aspect of self-knowledge. It determines the amount of effort individuals will apply in assigned activities and the extent to which they will persevere if they face challenges. Hence, it is important to know how students' ICT usage, literacy relates, and literacy relates with students' ICT self-efficacy. Knowing the relationship uh, between these variable can provide insight into fostering ICT self-efficacy by supporting the need for all students to have access to and use of ICT and to be effectively taught ICT literacy. Research problem. Students' ICT usage, self-efficacy, and uh, literacy can play significant, uh, a significant role in students' academic achievement. But there is lack of full knowledge and agreement in the literature about the relationship between ICT usage, self-efficacy, and literacy. Research purpose. The, therefore, the purpose of this study is to use quantitative data from the International Computer and the Information Literacy Study 2018 to examine how United, student, United States grade eight students, ICT usage, ICT self-efficacy, and ICT literacy relate with each other while considering students' gender, race, and school level socioeconomic status. Significance of the study. This study is significantly, it's significant because it will collaborate or add new knowledge to existing literature about these variables. Also, by revealing the relationship between students' uh, ICT usage, ICT self-efficacy, and literacy, the study findings may help educators to change or maintain their practices and attitudes regarding the role of ICT in teaching and learning process. Research questions. Number one, is there a relationship between students' self, uh, self reported usage of general ICT applications such as Microsoft Word PowerPoint and Excel, and their ICT self-efficacy regarding the use of uh, these uh, applications across the United States, a data set of the International Computer and Information Data Study 2018, while disaggregating the data by less gender and school level socioeconomic status. Such question two, is there a relationship between students' self-reported usage of general ICT applications 
and their ICT literacy across the United States uh, data set of the International Computer and Information Literacy Study 2018 when aggregating the data by the same uh, groups, less gender and school level. And the last question, is there a relationship between students' ICT literacy and their ICT uh, self-efficacy of use usage of general applications across the United States data of that study when disaggregating again the data by those groups? Research hypothesis, based on the uh, questions I just presented, these are the research uh, hypothesis. Hypothesis one, there are positive relationships between students' usage of general ICT application and their ICT self-efficacy across gender, less, and uh, school level socioeconomic status. Hypothesis two, there is uh, there are positive relationships, relationships between students' usage of general ICT application and their ICT literacy across uh, gender, less, and school level socioeconomic status. Hypothesis three, there are a positive relationship between students' ICT literacy and their ICT self-efficacy across gender, less, and school level socioeconomic status. Limitation of the study, finding of this study may not be applicable to eight grade students in every country. However, the finding may be applicable to eight grade students in countries with similar context as the United States. Chapter two, literature review. Importance of technology in education. Cognizant of the importance of education in a, of te education technology, the U.S. Department of Education developed and is implementing the National Educational Technology Plan. The plan highlights highlighted educational technology as an effective tool for creating, engage, engaging, and empowering learning experiences for all learners. Importance of education continues. This emphasis on education technology is aligned with different, again, um, in, uh, international standards, such as um, the, the International Society for Technology uh, in Education, also standards for technological and engineering literacy, uh, framework for 21st century learning, as well as the next generation science standards. And finally, mathematics, um, common core standards for mathematics. Conceptual framework of the study. This study uh, will use the positivism worldview. The positivism advocates use of hypothesis to investigate causal relationship or association between or among variables. And because my study is uh, focusing on finding uh, these the relationships between the variables, this um, conceptual framework is suitable. Literature suggests that ICT usage, ICT self-efficacy, and ICT uh, literacy are positively interrelated regardless of students' gender, less, or socioeconomic status. Now, this is a pictorial uh, port uh, portrayal of the conceptual framework. So you have the three variables, ICT usage, ICT literacy and self-efficacy. And the, L, uh, the LOs connecting these variables, they uh, 
double pointed. That means that each one of these variables affect the other two. International computer and information literacy. The International Computer and Information Literacy Study 2013 is a pioneering study because it is the first international com comparative assessment to focus on students' acquisition of computer and information literacy in digital age. And the second um, study, uh, the se second cycle of this study was conducted in 2018. The third study of the same study of this, this ass assessment is being conducted this year. Computer, uh, the International Computer and the Information Literacy Study 2013 was composed of two main parts the CIL test, student and the student questionnaire. However, in 2018, the assessment compo was composed of three parts, the computer and the information literacy test, computational thinking uh, test, and also the student questionnaire. My study or this study will use data from computer and information literacy test and student questionnaire only. The computer and information literacy test, test students uh, computer and information literacy based on the four computer and information literacy strands which I have already presented. This study will obtain students' ICT literacy data from the computer and information literacy test results. Students' questionnaire collected data about students' characteristic, home and family, uh, usage, um, uh, usage of ICT at school and, and at home, and students thought about using and learning ICT. This study will obtain students' ICT usage and self-efficacy data from the student questionnaire. Students' ICT usage. In 2015, it was reported that 83 to 92% of US students in grade four, eight, and 12 who took the National Assessment of Education and Progress Math and Leading Assessments reported they have access to and use computer at home. And 86% to 91% of the student reported to have access to computer at school. Overall, having access to computer in school or at home was positively associated with high academic achievement in different stats. While not having access to computer at school or at home was positively associated with low scores. Findings suggest uh, that on average high level of students ICT usage was positively related with high students' STEM self-efficacy. And according to UNESCO, globally only one in three children and one in six of the poorest children have access to internet during COVID-19 pandemic. So this shows how um, the, the access to ICT globally look like. So studies suggest 
ICT access and usage vary by students' gender, less, and socioeconomic status. This study will examine the relationship between student ICT usage, self-efficacy, and literacy across gender, less, and socioeconomic status. ICT literacy. ICT literacy has positive effect on student attitude, motivation, and interest toward STEAM, as well as achievement in uh, STEAM subjects. Gender difference in ICT literacy has been observed. In many studies, gap on ICT literacy due to socioeconomic status and less has been also observed. Self-efficacy. Students' high self-efficacy score have been found to be positively associated with high students' academic achievement in various study, such as Bendula and uh, Lohati. In the International Computer and Information uh, Literacy Study 2018, Gelo's scores uh, slightly, was slightly higher than those of boys. However, boys, score, boys scored significantly higher on ICT self-efficacy in advanced um, skills. So the Gelo's score generally scored high on basic skills, but the boys scored high on advanced um, ICT skills. So the literature have, the literature in the literature, there are mixed, uh, mixture finding about ICT usage, self uh, literacy and self-efficacy. This study will investigate these variables across gender, less and socioeconomic status. Chapter three, methods. The search design. The study uh, will use a survey design. The survey research design is suitable design for this study uh, because it uh, focuses on exposing the relationships of the search variable. And that is the focus of my study as well. The target student population in the International Computer and Information Literacy Study 2018 was all eight grade students in the 14 participating countries. Participant countries were as, fall, uh, as listed here, Chile, Denmark, Finland, Germany, United States, and so on. And two, Benchmark, benchmarking education system participated also in the study. These were Moscow City and the Germany state of North Line. The sample of the study continue. The study used multiple stage sampling, stratification and cluster sampling. Simple weight and non-response adjustment were determined, were determined for each country. Uh, first stage of the sampling was school sampling where a stratified two-stage sampling cluster sampling design was used. At least 150 schools were selected from each country. In the second stage, systematic simple random sampling was used to select 20 students in each school. If students enrolled in target grade at the school was um, 25 or fewer, all students in that school were included in the sample. So the actual participation in the international Computer and Information Literacy Study 2018 
is as follows. Overall, schools participated were two, uh, more than 2,200 and students participation were um, uh, more than uh, 46,500. In the United States, which is the focus of my study, schools participation were, was 263 and students participated in the study were 6,790. Instruments of the study. Uh, development of the computer and information literacy. Let me, excuse me. Okay. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Kamanara. I can't hear you. Did your uh, sound go off? Are you muted? Oh, uh, no. Uh, let me see. Melissa Gibbs, can you hear him? That must be yes, on my I can end. Still hear him. Yeah, I can hear him. You can hear me? I see my mic is on, maybe, I don't know, internet connection maybe. Do you hear me okay, now? Go ahead and continue. Do you hear me now? I don't, but I'll read. Okay, let, let me let me try connecting my headphone. Can you hear me? Hello? Dr. Boston, can you hear me? I can hear you. Dr. Kanyongo? Yes, I can hear you. And Dr. Kavunala still can't hear me. Hello? Okay, so I don't know what is happening. Is it my end you can, or? He did thumbs up. You can hear now? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. So can I continue now? So uh, development of the uh, instruments for this study, I mean, for the International Computer and Information Literacy Study 2018. Um, the items for the CIL test was developed by three groups of research experts at the International Computer and Information Literacy International Cent uh, Study Center in collaboration with um, national research coordinators. Each of the five modules in the test was composed of several small tasks uh, to be completed in one in less than one minute and a large and one and, and a large task to be completed in 15, 15 to 20 minutes. Each student completed only two modules out of the five which were, was, uh, were randomly assigned. Small tasks were multiple choice and short constructed answers, also drag and drop. Large tasks required the student to use real computer applications to modify and create information based on given instructions. Items covered the eight aspects of computer and information literacy. Development of students' questionnaire also followed the same process. Time uh, for completing the student questionnaire was between 20 to 25 minutes. Instruments um, to ensure val val validity and reliability, the CL test and questionnaire were uh, items were extensively reviewed by multiple groups, expert groups, then were administered in the in a field trial to a sample uh, to a portion of the sample target uh, population. Data collection was done at different times in 2018. 
This was due to different school, school year calendars in participating countries. Data collection was compu uh, computerized um, and the assessment master examiner computer software was used to facilitate the process. At each country level, the International Computer and the Literacy Study National Research Coordinator supervised the data collection with help of staffs in their centers. At school level, trained tester administers under supervision of uh, the school coordinator administered the test to students. Scoring of the assessment. Multiple choice items were scored automatically by computer. Constructed response items were scored by human scholars. Um, AM marker computer software facilitated scoring uh, of the constructed response items. The software also allowed the national research coordinators to create scoring teams and to assign score, uh, scholars to scoring to scrolling teams. Also, the software provided real-time interlater reliability report to scrolling supervisors. Inter uh, the variables of the study, independent variable students usage of general ICT applications, dependent variables, ICT self-efficacy regarding the use of general applications, and ICT literacy. And finally, grouping variables, student gender, less and school level socioeconomic status. In the International Computer and Information Literacy Study 2018, usage of general ICT uh, applications were, and self-efficacy regarding the use of uh, general applications are scales. This means they were deliver, deliverable variables. Student ICT usage of general ICT applications was delivered from three items in, on question 19, which asked the, how often do you use ICT for each of the following activities? ICT self-efficacy regarding the use of general applications where was delivered from eight items on question 27, which asked me how often can you, how well, how well can you do each of these tasks when using ICT, when using ICT. And these are the questions, uh, items uh, uh, which uh, included in each of the study variables. The, the scales. So these are for ICT usage, three items on question 19. Then these are eight questions from question 20, number 27 of the um, survey. Students score points on the computer and the information uh, literacy uh, test determined their ICT literacy level, which are also known as plausible values. And there are five levels as shown here, showing also the point ranges for each level, variables and the scale in the study continues. School level socioeconomic status for the United States students was determined by the percentage of students eligible for reduced or fully plies school lunch. And school principals provided data uh, by selecting one of these options. Uh, based on the percent of students eligible for the program. Data analysis. I, uh, International Computer and Information Literacy Study public 
use data is publicly available on IAE data repository. Um, special computer software was used to unzip the folder and data files in the folder are in SPSS statistic package. The international the international database analyzer in short IDB analyzer will be used to analyze the data. And this is the screenshot of the uh, IDB analyzer main menu where you can choose which um, statistical package you want to use between SPSS, SAS, and R. Uh, also, you can choose uh, which module you want to uh, use. Is it um, converting files? Is it accessing and merging uh, files or uh, conducting analysis? IDB analyzer along with SPSS will be used to compute Pearson correlation coefficients of the variables. Missing data will be deleted listwise. Jackknife repeated replica replication uh, sampling weight will be used. Confidence level will be set at 90, 95%. And this is the IDB analyzer setup for computing Pearson correlation where you choose uh, the variables you want to include, and also you choose the independent variable, the dependent variable, and um, how you want to uh, deal with missing data. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present my proposal. I owe you back, Dr. Boston. Very nicely done, very thorough. I'll Thank ask you. Dr. Kenyango and Dr. Carbonara if they have, if they want to start with any questions. Yes, uh, Dave, you wanna go or I can go? Can Dave hear us now or? <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'll go. Um, okay, great job, uh, Malin. And uh, yeah, very thorough. I agree with um, Dr. Boston on this. Uh, Thank you so much, Dr. Kanyongo. Yeah, yeah, well, well, well done. Uh, now, I have a couple of questions or comments. Um, just again, uh, talking about that consistency, right? Uh -huh. Um. One of the things uh, under your design, of course, rightfully so, I think you mentioned um, that uh, the you are using survey research design, right? Because these yes. are survey data, right? Yes. But also, <clears throat> it's important to mention or to include that specifically, this is a correlational design because oh. based on the nature of your research questions, right? your research questions are asking about relationship. Mm -hmm. So naturally that leads into a correlational design. So that helps with that alignment from your research questions to the design. Uh, so, okay, so I say like this uh, will be a survey correlation design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what you have is accurate, you say, you know, survey research design mm -hmm. specifically uh, the specific design for this study is, so again, you justify, right, why you are calling the survey is because, you know, the data were collected through survey research. So that part you explain. And then you say, now, uh, based on the nature of the research questions, measuring relationship, this is a correlational design. Okay. Yeah, now, now to that point, that takes me to the next question or point I have. You know, one of the things when we do and the reason why I'm talking about um, this correlational design is because of the next point I'm making here. Because I noticed that in your research, uh, in your, uh, yeah, somewhere there, I think under design, you mentioned that you have independent and dependent variables. But accurately, when you are doing a correlational design, mm -hmm. if you are using correlation, 
it doesn't distinguish between independent and dependent variables, right? Okay. Because once you do that, you are implying that correlation imply causality. You are yet that's not what your study is about. If oh, you yeah. were doing a prediction, for example, then yeah, it is uh, it, it, it is accurate to distinguish between independent and dependent variables. So what I would suggest is just you know say the variables for this study are without distinguishing between uh independent and dependent variable okay thank you so yeah. much sure and uh another comment uh yeah so now uh yeah perfect i mean i think you and i we talked about this in terms of the analysis and we felt like you know pearson correlation is the is the right analysis i don't remember what you have in your document but if uh just double check to make sure you give us or give the reader the rationale as to why Pearson correlation is appropriate, right? Okay. Because you are dealing with the scale of variables. So you would say because of the nature of the variables, the way they were measured, scale of variables, therefore Pearson correlation is the appropriate analysis for this study. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, you know, uh, tied to that, then you we need you to discuss the assumptions, right? Right, so Pearson, because for us to use that Pearson, certain assumptions should, so to say this data, they meet, you know, the data are continuous, you know, normally distributed, uh, you know, all those assumptions of Pearson correlation, we need to see a section on how, where you discuss uh, those statistical assumptions. Because again, that will just make your study, uh, your document even stronger because the reader now is gonna understand, okay, what design you are gonna use, why are you using that design? What analysis you are gonna use, and why you are using that analysis, and what are those assumptions or conditions which are required for Pearson correlation? Okay. Uh, so include a section on uh, on that as well. Okay. Thank you so much for that again. Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. So, yeah. For the most part, those are the comments which I had. Uh, so yeah, I will yield back to Dr. Boston. Dave, I just had something very small kind of related to that. So if I could jump in and then we'll pass it to you. Um, I also wondered, Malini, if you need to say secondary data analysis, and I feel like you do say that in the larger document or at least in one version. Um, uh I mentioned that some, yeah, somewhere in, in the larger document. Okay, yeah. So I would just double check, like when you know when you're saying about it's surveyed, does it so it might say it's a secondary data analysis based on um, an original, you know, mm. based on this data set that was collected by survey design, and you know, and then also say about that yours is correlational. So I mean, I feel like it, it may be a sentence, and then justifying why secondary data analysis are important. And I feel like that's in the document somewhere, but just double check. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Dave, we'll hand it over to you. Are you hearing me all right? Now yeah. you are, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, nice job there, Malimi, um, and appreciate the changes that you made from the previous document. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. So you talk about um, post-positivism, and I have really two issues about that. One is, the first question is, what do you expect to find about the relationship between post-positive data and ICT use? Yeah, uh, so as I mentioned on the hypothesis, what I expect is to find positive relationships between the study variables. So are you indicating that if you have access, you have use? 
if a student has access to data, mm -hmm. or, excuse me, if student has access to uh, ICT, mm -hmm. do they use it? Yeah, okay, good question, good question. And I have been also, that has been always coming in my mind. Uh, I think uh, I reached the conclusion to say that access does not always means usage, okay. but usage needs access. There is <laughs> no usage without access. Yeah. Good point, good point. Um, very good, thank you. You're welcome. So that, may come, that may come up again in, in the uh, defense argument. Okay. So you, you, uh, based on the results of the data that, that uh, you analyze. Okay. So post positives also argue um, about uh, theories, hypotheses, background knowledge values, of the researcher that can influence what is observed. Although this is secondary data, do you think you have any biases going into the analysis of this data that would influence the results? Mm, no, I'm not aware of any bias at the moment. Maybe you can you can highlight on possible <laughs> biases. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I mean, everybody, I, look, I guess, could I can have. Look, I, can, I can look um, and uh, do research on them. And, okay. and so the only reason I suggest that is, is that because bias is an important part of post-positivism. Okay. So when you mentioned post-positivism back at the beginning there, uh, my suggestion would be that you indicate that, yes, post-positivists will uh, discuss bias, but your anticipation, you're anticipating going into this uh, secondary analysis without any bias. Mm -hmm. I think that clarifies any potential issues that, that have been out there. Okay. And then finally, just one, it's really a typo. Okay. Let's see, you in your document mm -hmm. and the one that you sent recently, mm -hmm. you have a subheading called International Computer and Information Literacy Study. Mm -hmm. And underneath that, you talk about the ICILS 2028 assessment. Mm -hmm. My guess is that you mean the 2018 assessment. Yeah. What does that mention on the document? It was underneath a paragraph that starts with International Computer and Information Literacy Study in the doc in the written document, mm -hmm. not the presentation. Mm -hmm. So you typed 2028 assessment. Mm -hmm. I don't think you mean 2028, right? You mean 20? Do you mean 2018? Yeah, 2018. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my, <laughs> Okay, that's my, that's my point. Yeah. All right, and you talk about the, let's see, talk about the relationships, the causal relationships. Oh, um, oh, uh, Dr. Ken Yango brought up the issue. Uh, on slide 28, you mentioned causal relationships. That's where it was. And I think we already discussed that these are not causal issues, right? Okay, this is just the relationship. You're talking right? about you're not talking about a cause and effect. You're talking about a relationship. Okay. So I, I think the use of that word causal mm -hmm. is could be confusing, at least to me anyway. On slide 28, I think I saw that. Thank you so much. I will collect that. Okay. And that's all that I have. Thank you. Can, uh, can I just jump in? Uh... Uh, something related to what Dr. Carbonara just said when he was talking about bias, and uh, I was intrigued by uh, Malim's response that I don't have bias. But the truth is, um, implicitly, researchers we have that's why it's called implicit bias, right? Because you are not aware of it. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you are, you know, you have some level of passion for this topic you are looking at, or you are interested in this, yes, that uh, brings in uh, some level of implicit bias in there, right? So 
uh, one of the things that we encourage, and this is mostly like when you know students are doing qualitative research, mm -hmm. and not so much uh, in quantitative, although in quantitative that can still apply, but you know what we call positionality statement, right? Mm -hmm. To come up with a positionality statement to say, you know, as a researcher in this space, in this research area, where do you stand, right? So that's one way to kind of uh, address or to guard against some of those biases, you know. So uh, I just wanted to point that that you know, no, none of us can claim that we don't have bias in what we do. No, we do. We have some implicit bias of some sort. So. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Uh, also. Yeah, I had the same thing written down that it might be helpful to just include a quick paragraph that's your positionality statement. So again, it just describes your characteristics in this space, why you're interested in this topic. And, and you can make a statement that while you don't anticipate bias, that you know there may be implicit bias associated with your specific positionality. Okay. I think also for um, Dr. Carbonero's question about access and usage, mm -hmm. um, and you may have, again, you might have this in the document somewhere, but I think just explicitly a sentence that says um, you're using usage as a proxy for access. Okay. Because, you know, usage, like you said, kind of necessitates <laughs> access. So usage is a proxy. Proximity. As a proxy, P R O X Y, it, like as a substitute or as a stand in. Okay. Like a logical, like it's a, it's like a logical stand in for the other thing. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. And I think slide 28, if I'm not mistaken, you, you were quoting something mm -hmm. and it said, casual um causal or associations and the same thing there maybe just having a sentence after that that says this study is mainly is looking at associations okay is that right because i think on the slide you were quoting so again just clarifying that that you're looking at the association between variables yeah i think that was under the conceptual framework post right. good point yeah thank you so much mm -hmm. All right, anything else from the committee? No, I'm good. I'm good. All right, I'm going to set, let me see if I remember how to do this. <laughs> I feel like I was a Zoom expert at one point. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording.